Hi grade six and welcome to my channel. So here we are at EBV Math Ed and we currently have 35 subscribers. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more math learning fun. So are you guys ready? And quoting Diego V. Let's go. So in today's video, we're gonna be learning how to convert units of measurement. So this could be units of measurement using the US customary system, or converting units of measure using the metric system, or even converting units of measure between both kinds of systems. And so to do this, we will be using what we learned about unit rates and what we learned about ratio tables to help us convert units of measurement. Here is the reference sheet that we'll be using to help us convert units of measurement, and a copy of this will be available for you in Google Classrooms. We can now see the metric system beside the US customary system, and the different names that we have for each type of measurement. It should be a lot easier for you to identify if the unit is in the metric system because that's what we use here in Venezuela. So taking a look at our first example, we're gonna be converting measures within the same system. So we're gonna convert 36 um, quarts to gallons. And hopefully you're thinking, well, quarts and gallons aren't something I'm super familiar with. So that might be a hint to tell you that this is a US customary measurement. So from this, now we can look at our reference sheet. And from our reference sheet, we can now focus in looking at the US customary conversions. So looking at this chart, we want to look for gallons and quarts. And here we can see that we've got one gallon is equal to four quarts. So we're going to use this information to help us solve this question. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to create a ratio table. And I'm just going to put quarts on the top of my ratio table uh, because it's the first word in this question and then I'll put gallons underneath it. So I'm gonna create my table. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you wanna use a ruler, you can. Um, I don't have a ruler right now, so I'm just gonna draw this out. And then um, in my first column, what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna take the information that I saw in my chart of one gallon is equal to four quarts. So the quarts is gonna be four, and the gallons is gonna be one. Because what I can see now in my ratio table is that this column is showing what is equivalent. So I talked about how we can use unit rates to help us figure out the conversion. So this question doesn't actually need to find a unit rate, but I'm just gonna show you guys anyways, because sometimes um, the numbers aren't going to be as nice, so it is good to have a unit rate. So if I want a unit rate, that means I need to have this as a one. And the reason why I want the quartz to become a one is because if I make another column for my table, I'm trying to figure out what 36 quartz is into gallons. So it's a lot easier to know that if I have a one here, I can just take one times 36 to give me 36. So that's what I'm gonna do. So now if I'm gonna get, how does one become four? If I want anything to be, sorry, how does four become one? If I want anything to become one, I have to divide it by itself. So I'm gonna divide it by four, and whatever I do to the top, I'm gonna to do to the bottom. And then one divided by four, I'm just gonna leave it as a fraction, which is one over four. And now that I have one, one can become 36 by just multiplying it by 36. So here, I'll multiply it by 36 on the bottom as well. So now I have some fractions. I've got one over four times 36. I'll put that over one. And then I'll look at the diagonals to see if I can simplify. Both of these numbers can be divided by four. So this will give me a one and 36 divided by four is nine. So now I get nine over one, which is just equal to nine. So this here is nine. So I've just converted that six, 36 quarts is equal to nine gallons. All right, so here you have your first try question for this video. What you want to do is you wanna use this chart that we have here on the right hand side to convert 48 yards, sorry, 48 feet into yards. So at this point in the video, we're gonna use the example that we just went over to help you solve this first try question. 
So in our second example, we're going to be converting measures between systems. So here we're going to convert 10 meters to feet. So if we look at our reference sheet, we have this section that says US to metric and metric to US. So we'll use these two pieces of information to help us solve this question. So notice we can use this one or this one. And one of these charts is gonna be easier for us to use than the other, so now we're gonna to try to figure out which one is the better method. So just like before, I'm gonna do a ratio table, so I'll have meters and then feet. And then in my first column, I'm gonna look at this first chart here, and I'm gonna look for meters and feet, and here I have one meter is approximately, that's what these two squiggly lines mean, 3.28 feet. So in my chart now, I can fill this in with one meter is 3.28 feet. And I can put in another column here. And I want to make 10 meters. So what I can do for this one is just put in 10 right here. So this one is nice and easy because I can see how do I get from 1 to become 10? Well, I multiply by 10. So whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So I'm going to multiply this by 10 as well. So 3.28 times 10 is 32.8. So in this method or strategy, I have now found that 10 meters is approximately 32.8 feet. So now we'll do this question using the other chart. Um, and again, we're going to do a ratio table, so I'm going to have meters on the top and feet on the bottom. And then from my table, I'm going to look for where I have feet and meters. So in this table, I see that I have one foot is equal to 0 0.3 meters. And what I want is I want to get to 10 meters. So ideally, I would want the number 10 here. And I want, want to think, how does 0 0.3 become 10? But 0 0.3 to become 10 is not as easy. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to have to use that unit rate. So I'm going to extend my chart, and I'm going to put now instead here 10. And if I want to use the unit rate, that means I want to have a 1, because it's a lot easier to use 1. So now I know that from 1 to become 10, I would multiply that by 10, which is why we're using that unit rate. So how does 0 0.3 become 1? So anything can become 1 by dividing it by itself. So I'm going to divide this by 0 0.3. And from here, whatever I do to the top, i got to do the bottom. So I'm going to divide this by 0 0.3. And I'll just leave this as a fraction. So 1 divided by 0 0.3. And then on the top, I multiply by 10. So times 10 to this side. So now I have 1 over 0 0.3 times 10. So that's like 10 over 1. And then that would be just like 10 divided by 0 0.3, which gives me 33.33. And that's just going to continue forever. So we can use this little line to show that these threes will repeat. So if I now put this, I'll have 33.33 here. And then in this method, I would get that 10 meters is approximately 33.33 feet. Now, here we can see that um, this second method used up a lot more work. It was a longer strategy. So ideally, what you want to think about when you're using or solving these types of problems and you want to figure out which chart to use, um, the first thing I would do is I would create my meters to feet and I would put in the number I'm looking for for 10 in my column on the second one. And then I would look for which table has the 1 here so that it's a lot easier to get to the 10. So here is your second try question for this video. We want to convert 7 miles to kilometers. And if you need to, we're going to round to the nearest hundredth. So rounding to the nearest hundredth is rounding to two decimal places. And you can use this chart that's here um, to help you solve this question. So here in our third example, we're going to use conversion factors to help us convert our units. So in this example here, we want to convert 4 pounds to kilograms. So I pulled out these two parts of the chart because this is in 
customary, US customary, and this is in the metric system. So I'm either going to use this chart or this chart. So now I have to decide which chart to use. So when I start off this problem, I'm going to write four pounds. And what I'm going to do is with conversion factors, I'm going to be using multiplication. And when I do this, what I want to do is I'm going to multiply it by a fraction. And the reason it's a fraction is because remember ratios can be represented as fractions. And what I want is on the bottom of this fraction, I want it to be pounds on the bottom and I want this to be a unit of one, so one pound. So now I have to look in my charts and I have to find out where do I have one pound. So if I look, I see here I've got one pound is approximately 0 0.45 kilograms. So that means I can put 0 0.45 four or five kilograms on the top of this fraction. And that's just telling us here in this fraction that for 0 0.45 kilograms per one pound. So now if I wanted to multiply these two numbers together, I have that four. So what I have to do is put this over one. And now what I have to do is I have to multiply. But before I multiply, notice that I have pounds here and pounds here. So they're on the top and on the bottom. And what this does is it allows us to cancel our units out. So this gets canceled and that gets canceled. So now when I multiply, I've got four times 0 0.45 kilograms. So I multiply my numbers and four times 0 0.45 is 1.8. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the units that I had left behind, which is the kilograms, and divide it by 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. So this is approximate. And 1.8 divided by 1 is going to be just 1.8, so I have approximately 1.8 kilograms. So that tells me now that 4 pounds is approximately equal to 1.8 kilograms. So this is my final answer for this one. And this is using conversion factors. So here is your third try question for this video. We want to convert 20 quarts to liters. And if we need to, we're going to round to the nearest hundredth. So again, hundredth means we're going to round to two decimal places. And for this, we're going to use the conversion factors. So what we're going to do is use the information or use the example above to help you solve this question. All right, so since conversion factors or using conversion factors is new for us, let's do just one more example. We're going to convert five yards per second to yards per minute. So I'm going to have five yards and it's per second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply and it's per one second. And then I'm going to multiply this by a fraction and I want to have seconds on the top of my fraction and minutes on the bottom of my fraction because I'm trying to convert seconds into minutes. So what I want to do is I want to have the bottom of my fraction to be one. So now in order for me to figure out what's going to go beside my second, I need to think how many seconds are in one minute. So we can look at our chart, but we should know this already that there are 60 seconds in one minute. So now when we multiply this out, what we can see here is that the units of seconds are going to cancel. And then we're left with on the top five yards times 60. So we're just going to do five times 60, which gives me 300 and our units will be yards, and then over one times one, which is one, and then the units that I have is minute. So we just converted it. So now we know that five yards per second is equal to 300 yards and per minute. So when we write this out, we can write it as a fraction like this to say five yards per second, or if you write it like this, 300 yards and then the slash per minute. So two different ways of writing the same thing. So here is our last try question for this uh, video. We're going to convert 60 kilometers per hour to miles per hour. So they're both using hours. So what we need to do is look at converting the kilometers into miles. And we're going to round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. So again, hundredth is two decimal places. All right, so grade six, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. See you guys in the next one.